So this is part two on my three-part series on my 65-gallon community freshwater tank. I'm going to talk about the fish in greater detail in this video and give you some different shots of the tank and give you some advice on the different species in here, how to keep them and what their tendencies are. Before I get to that though, let me just put a quick reminder. Definitely level your tank first and cycle the water and do not rush that process. Take your time and do that correctly. You don't level your tank one day the whole thing could burst. It's theoretically possible. So take care of those steps first and I'll talk about setup and the technical aspects in part three. Well, right now I just want to talk about the fish. Here we are zoomed in on the left side. You can see a couple of the mollies there in the lower left corner. There's a Dalmatian, a platinum, and a marble sailfin molly in there. You can see the rose line sharks toward the middle. You can see a couple of the dwarf cichlids on the bottom. You can see the German ram. There's a red tail shark right there hanging out there also at the bottom of the obelisk. We're kind of tracking that red tail shark right there. Oh, nice timing there. Perform for the camera going into the cave. Over here, we're looking at the right side. As you can see, there's an Egyptian ancient wonderland theme here in the aquarium. We got a creamsicle molly right there hanging out. Dalmatian molly right there at the fake palm tree. There's a mix of real and fake plants in this tank. The real plants give the fish something to munch on and also they help oxygenate the water and keep the ammonia level down. We get a look here at some of the guppies. That's a fancy guppy there with the extraordinarily large tail. Back to the wide shot here, you can see everything once again. Dwarf Gourami there in the upper left. Zoomed in here again, you got the Dwarf Gourami in the back, and then you got the German Ram, sometimes called the Butterfly Ram. Fish have different names. It's kind of hard to keep track what's what, but a lot of people call this the German Ram. It's actually a South American fish. Must get the name German Ram by some selective breeding to make it so colorful. And in terms of freshwater fish, I think this one might be at the top of the list as far as the, just the most beautiful, nice looking all around fish. It's just got beautiful colors. Even the fins have different colors, even sort of like a glitter type highlight thing going on in the fins. It's just a gorgeous looking fish. And here we get a look at some of the aggression that you get with some of the Dwarf cichlids, they're very territorial. You see the Bolivian ram stepping in there too. Another South American dwarf cichlid. Bolivian ram is not quite as colorful, but it's got a lot of character. It's a fun fish to watch. There's the, a German ram in the lower left. That was not as quite as bright and colorful, although that could be due to stress that it's not as colorful at the moment. There is an electric ram right there, hanging out kind of by that fake tree. Back to the German rams here. This is the extra colorful one. See, I try to mark territories too. There needs to be some spots where the territories are sort of marked off. It helps if they don't see each other all day long. It, it'll minimize the tension because when they do see each other, they tend to get territorial. Now notice they don't bother this male molly at all. I mean, that male molly is, is, is munching on a shrimp pellet right there, and they don't even care. But these guys, when they see each other, talking about the, the dwarf cichlids, they always tend to, you know, lock horns and, and go after each other. But it's really more just barking at each other, you know. It's not the type of situation she's so ignoring that. Dalmatian molly entirely, but they see each other and then there's a reaction. One turns the other way and here they go locking horns again. But I was saying they don't really fight each other and, and, and you know, tear each other's fins the way beta fish do, for example. There we got the rose line sharks leading us down here. The red tail shark. Now that one's going to get big and muscular. It may change my tank quite a bit when that one grows up along with the rainbow one that I have they might start to bully the guppies and other fish that I have in here. So I have to monitor that as those guys get big. You see the territory disputes going on there again. 
with the Bolivian Ram and the German Ram back and forth but it's not all day long they chill out sometimes and then it's important that you have things blocking line of sight they don't see each other all day it, it eases the tension and then they start to act more peaceful but there's going to be a little bit of that going on some people think you can't mix the Bolivians with the Germans but I'm making it work this electric ram you see is a little displaced right now he's he's not fighting for the territory and he's sort of given up at the moment heading up there I got to monitor that because he it could really add to his stress if he doesn't have a spot now I'm cutting away here to a couple months ago when I had three Bolivian Rams now look how they've clearly each claimed a territory and they're kind of okay with each other but this led to a problem because I had this balloon German Ram over here and now he's really displaced and doesn't know where to go and then there was this German Ram who was kind of stressed out and, and also didn't know where to go because they want to be at the bottom by the gravel and here they are just not sure what to do so I had to relocate these guys if you're getting problems like that you can take them back to the store or relocate them here was the electric Ram you see at one point he claimed this territory and he was fine and he was actually being a little more aggressive but then now as you saw in the previous shots he was kind of hiding and I got to just monitor that. Now we're going to take a look at the guppies here. These are fancy guppies. Hanging out by the pyramid there. And then on the lower left there, that fish has a couple of different names. Some people put it in the endler category. Others say that's a lyratil guppy. Again, there's so many common names for fish. It just depends which one you want to go by. You get a shot of the neon tetra there in the back. I've actually removed those from this tank and put them in a smaller tank. I don't really recommend neon te tetra in general, nor do I recommend them in a big tank because they they kind of die easily and then they're really hard to find in the tank. You got to look at one of the endlers that I really like over there. There's another endler there next to that fancy guppy that you saw earlier with the enormous tail. There's the endler, one of the ones that I really like. The endlers and guppies, they tend to hang out near the top of the tank although you'll see them at times in the middle and bottom but most of the time they're there near the top now that was definitely from selective breeding you see this one with the enormous tail beautiful tail I don't think that was natural in nature somebody managed to breed some with big tails until they got that result there's a female right there that her fin if she comes back in the shot I don't know where she went her fin was slightly nipped from a crayfish in my other tank, so I had to move her here. It grows back clear, and then it colors up later. And there we got our two endlers, or lyratil guppies, depends what you want to call them. There's the one with the nipped fin. You can see it growing back clear, and then it colors up later. Shifting over here to one of our mollies. That's a Dalmatian molly. It's a male. It's a really nice-looking fish. And there's a female Dalmatian right on cue next to him he's heading over here toward the air stone I guess that's kind of like taking a shower right there with the bubbles going through him I like this fish he is however one that sort of gets bullied by my marble sailfin molly you'll see the example of that later there's a creamsicle molly she's a female really nice looking fish right here like her a lot. There's the marble sailfin. There's a creamsicle male lyra tail molly. The sailfin and the Dalmatian don't ever mess with him. There was the example. There was the platinum molly. There's the marble sailfin. Now he's going to take a little nip at the Dalmatian here. You'll see a little more of that later. See now he, the marble is trying to mate with the female Dalmatian right there. And here we go, the marble is kind of trying to show the male Dalmatian who's boss here. He's going to nip at him a couple times. See, this can be dangerous. He just rammed him into the glass, so you kind of have to monitor this. I almost moved the Dalmatian out because I was worried, but he actually was very difficult to catch, and then it ended up being that he was surviving, just kind of learning his place. There's the two creamsicles hanging out together, male and female.
back to the Dalmatians. There's the female, and here comes the male trying to mate with her. Now, mollies are live bearers, just like guppies, which means their stomach just pours open and all the fry pour out. They don't lay eggs. Getting a look here at the red-tailed shark. They're very active fish, but they're kind of hard to find. Sometimes they don't. They swim, but they, they get out of the camera shot or they don't come out sometimes. Got the guppies there again. The marble molly. Coming over here back to the center of the tank. <clears throat> you can see the control panel there. There's a real pleco, also called the candy stripe pleco. I've got three of those in here. They're good because they only grow to four inches. They don't become enormous like some plecos and just dominate your tank. And they do a good job cleaning and they're pretty cool looking for plecos. One thing I didn't mention about guppies is they're very hardy fish. I got them just 48 hours after starting my tank and I didn't lose any. Guppies and endlers, they survive. You know, they're, they're, they're pretty tough little fish. Mollies are a little more tricky. Your tank needs to be more established and then with the cichlids, the dwarf cichlids, your tank needs to be even more established. There's the red-tailed shark heading into that cave right there. Having caves and plants is very important to give the fish hiding places. And then also sometimes they just don't feel like being in the light or if one is getting sort of bullied, it has some place to go seek refuge. And then the females, when the males are trying to breed with them too much, they got some places they can go and get out of line of sight. Line of sight is very important. If fish see each other constantly, there's definitely going to be a rising tension. Focusing here on that Bolivian ram. I really like this one. You know, it's got the big eyes. And kind of looks like a cartoon character. And it's a strong fish, strong personality. Also notice that in the ornaments, the sphinx and then the pyramid on the left side, I use the Dremel to carve holes in them because otherwise they're just taking up space. You want the fish to be able to use the ornaments kind of as caves. You know, it's very important that they, that they have places that they can just kind of hide out. That's our first look at the red wag platy there. Got afraid of his reflection a little bit right there. It's a nice fish. Now, now platies are similar to mollies, and I heard that there can be cross breeding between them. I haven't seen any of that going on, but this is a nice fish. Just kind of minds his own business, and then he's a different color, which brings out the contrast more among the fish. When you have ones of different color, it's, it just kind of makes the whole tank look nicer. Here we got a shot of the left side here, back to the right corner. We got the platy and the mollies and the Guppies just peacefully hanging out, nipping on that sphinx ornament. When feeding these guys, I, I put flakes first, and then I, when all the guppies and mollies get active, trying to compete for the flakes, and then sometimes the, the roseline sharks as well, because they're very quick, then I put some pellets in, so the pellets will go to the bottom, and the, and the dwarf cichlids can get a chance to eat because they, they never come to the surface to eat. So you got to make sure that your fish on the bottom are getting food. And I wouldn't worry about overfeeding too much. You hear so many fish keepers giving you warnings about ammonia spikes and this and that. These guys search for food all day long. So if there's some leftover flakes and shrimp, believe me, they're going to find it. Especially those, those real plecos. They suck on all the ornaments. And they, they put their mouth all over the glass and they're constantly just you know cleaning up so I wouldn't worry about that too much and sometimes flakes and things they go into the filter as well getting a nice close look again here at the Bolivian Ram the mollies I didn't mention they can be aggressive you saw that a little bit with the marble you know you just each fish has its own personality you never really know how they're going to react, but I would say mollies are as good as it gets for a community tank. They're strong fish, they're not so tiny that they're going to get eaten by other fish or anything like that. They got a lot of personality, they go all over the tank, they're fun to watch. Getting a look here at the 
German Rams again. Also, there's no none of that territorial stuff at nighttime. Once the lights go down, the fish all settle down. They find a quiet spot and, you know, they sleep. It's hard to see some of the fish at night. I, I peek at the tank and they're just in caves and behind the rocks and, you know, they find a place just to settle down and get some rest. There you saw the, ro uh, the rainbow shark for the first time. Again, they're kind of hard to film. They don't really just hang out in the open. There's the dwarf gourami. Back to the wide shot here. The, actually, that was a honey gourami that you saw. They do a... That's a good strong fish. And it's got those two whiskers on the bottom which, which give it electrostatic readings, which is really a cool way that they evolved. So this is part two. If you have any questions or you want to comment, please go ahead.